Just a quick recap on the on the fuel pump. This is the brand new fuel pump that I've pulled out. And uh, he just squealed and built about 20 PSI. And that was a GTA 4. Or GPA 4, pardon me. And uh, I got a GPA 6 pump. Now, they supplied this. And this is a typical fuel tank, you know, traditional fuel tank setup. And mine is a large ring. This is like a 3-inch ring, you know. And the ring on mine is substantially larger so I just put the pump on my my setup and and ran it. the only other thing is that they use the, this high pressure line or if you noticed on my pump my original pump it was just a rubber hose for the supply for the for the outlet side of the pump and so I went ahead and, and I chopped this, you know, to size and and put that on just just because the pump is a 200 GPH or 200 uh, liters per hour LPH as compared to 255 as compared to 190 and of course just a higher higher quality. So um, in any regard, it went together fine. I ran it up, did pressure tests, everything works great. It was indeed the fucking pump. So, that is done. Don't know if I showed this yet, but just keeping the dust off the heads. Uh, cylinder heads are built up as far as I can. Valves installed and all. And I just got back from the machine shop on one run. Got the pistons and the rods in. Rods are peened and, and uh, cleaned. New ARPs. Uh, they're installing the cam bearings right now and balancing the crank. They were balancing the crank as I was in there. So they're going to probably wrap that up this week, uh, today. Today happens to be Friday, so probably Monday uh, before I get, get it. Uh, but any, in any event, we'll start building the engine after... Get the engine stand out now. Well, would you look at that? Just look at it. Anyway, the engine came back. Got the block uh, a few hours ago. Squirted it with the silver. They primed it, which is kind of nice. They primed it gray. That's what this is in here. I didn't paint that. But I painted the block silver. And I painted the lower bell housing. Silver, uh, the copper freeze plugs that look cooler than shit, they'll match the pan and the valve covers, but those are just to tighten down. They're all sealed and in. Camshaft is in. Um, I got to get a cam key still. And uh, I don't have a uh, Allen head socket set. Maybe my wife does, but I don't. I have Torx. I, I have Allen head, but not this size. Not the larger side. I have the little guys. So so I got to run to the store and get get those. But I got the RTV in the rear main seal in and all that stuff. So I, that's that's Kieran. You know, they want that to sit for 20 minutes or an hour or something like that. And then final torque. I got them all. With a regular Allen wrench. All the plugs are in. Um, block plugs. I don't have the rear um, uh, cap uh, for the cam yet. I want to be able to get in there and, and clean it out. This guy. 
get in there and clean up, but I got to pop them in and I don't have a, I have some clearance there, but not enough to get a good backing on it. Uh, screwdrivers in to run the crank up against the, the thrust um, bearing, get every, all the caps straightened out. And that's about where I'm at. That's about where I'm at. And try to get her assembled up, hopefully get the pan on it. Uh, I put that on because I thought it would look cool. You know, you can read it, the Pomida right side up when the engine's upside down. That's kind of nuts. Why wouldn't they have printed it? The, yeah, why wouldn't they have printed it the other way? Because uh, of all the cars that the oil filter went on to make a mess when you unscrewed it. I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so that's what I got. That's what I got. Got workstations here, but that's the cylinder heads and stuff. Assembly area. Tools. Rocker arms cleaned and covered. Um, and then my gloves and my my small tools right here. And then, you know, as I in introduce uh, items into it, I can the bushings and stuff i try to stay ahead of the game here with with uh, with raw materials in any event uh that's what we got going on right now making a little progress getting excited actually all right a quick update um one three five and seven are in Two, four, six, eight, and eight are not. So I'm back to basically I assembled four. Now I'm going to assemble four. This workstation. Let me just get out. This workstation, I have the pistons and the entire all the assembly. Um, I'm using a guide um, that uh, that uh, uh Haynes, I think, I think it's Haynes, but I mean, he's a known engine, hemi engine builder, so the, some of the secrets and and tricks uh, involved with that. So at this point, I'm going to assemble the other four. I do have, of course, the crank is in. I have the camshaft in. I located a woodruff key. The machine shop that did the crank had a had a woodruff, so I can continue on on the assembly. Um, it's going, it's going well, it's going very well. And, uh, I'm moving on to this side. So again, keeping my workstations kind of separated, um, so that I can throw my extra tools here. I only have the tools that I need for assembly over here, um, in this case. And then, you know, I'll migrate as, as necessary to, depending on the nature of the project. But at this point, this is my production of eight pistons and I'm halfway through it. Well, it's a brand new morning and uh, I'm uh, at the, in the process. Of, I got the lifters installed. <clears throat> I brought the, I took the engine off of the stand and I just quickly fabbed up a crate this morning to put it on. It's just too heavy. I, I'm really concerned that, you know, these things, they say they weigh a thousand pounds fully assembled. You know, obviously I'm going with aluminum and that, that whole front assembly and the, uh, that was on it is considerably more heavier than, than, uh, than what I'm doing with the cast iron intake and all that stuff too. So I think I'm going to be down there, you know, not a thousand, maybe eight hundred, but not a thousand pounds. So, in any event, I brought it down to here, and I got those in. And I just wanted to point out, I've been having a couple of conversations, and people, you know, I, I'm saying this isn't a small block Chevy or a small block Ford. There are differences, and so one of the things is, you know, updating this. That's a distributor drive gear. Updating this to a uh, to an. Um, uh, an electronic ignition requires the replacement of it requires you know creative thinking and one one option is 
to replace the shaft. And you can see it's longer by about what, a quarter of an inch or so, maybe a little better, three eighths. Um, 354 to 360, but to basically replace the Hemi distributor drive, oil pump drive, whatever you want to call it, um, because that's really driving both with a longer shaft so that you can stick an LA uh, distributor in it. So he sticks up. See where the hole is? That gap is actually on this side. So he sticks farther up the gear so that um, he reaches the shorter shaft on it. Everything else about the distributor, in this case I'm using a Magnum distributor, um, fits into the engine block. In other words, it fits into this, this hole. So, it's a it's a quirky uh, engine in that uh, the rod bolts, for, for example, are big block Mopar. Um, God, there were so many, so many other variants um, as you as you go through it uh, that they share the flywheel. The the um, it's an eight bolt bolt pattern, so it's a big block bolt pattern. So much of it's big block, but you have to research almost everything because you almost always think, you know, it's unique, it's unique, it's unique. It's not. It's not unique. Now that that shaft is unique, but so I mean that's a that that would be a, a piece specific to the to the assembly, but so much of the the other components Chrysler shared across the product line, is like they did with the four twenty six. So. Um, it's, it's fun build, but this is just one thing I wanted to point out real quick. Making some pretty good progress. I've got the, of course, the front end on it, on it now. Um, if you notice, I got a hex bolt or, you know, a standard bolt, uh, an Allen head, another standard and then Allen. Uh, that's what I got because I'm confident brackets are going to come off of those. So I'm not going to go and buy a couple of uh, stainless steel Allen head bolts um, at the proper length, so on and so forth. That's just what came with the other kits. So with some of the other kits and shit that I had lying around. So don't know where that's going yet because I have to fab the whole front end. You'll know I did... Uh, Adjust in register the zero reference on here. Now how I did that was I put the dial indicator in the spark plug hole. Of course I dialed in the cam and all that, but now I'm back up and I wanna and I wanna verify everything and you know how close to this you know top dead center zero has gotta be zero. That's the point. And this is adjustable. So what I did was I went in and uh, uh dialed in and arbitrarily picked a number at uh, eight degrees uh, after top dead I think it was six or eight and rotated kept going back and forth until I get the exact same dial indicator reading with the exact same distance in degrees after top dead center so I'd sweep to let's just say 50 thousandths that number doesn't represent 50 thousandths to the top of the uh, the cylinder, anything of that nature it just represents fifty thousandths. I sweep over, and it comes back to fifty thousandths, and I stop, and I read my uh, my degrees before or after top dead, depending on which which direction I'm going. And I keep doing that until I get the exact same reading here and on the uh, on the dial indicator whether it be 50 thousands or 40 thousands, but at the exact same angle, I get the exact same piston height before and after top dead center. That means that in the middle is the exact top dead center. No piston hanging, nothing. It is the exact top dead center. So I've got that dialed in, and now I'm working on the distributor. I just dropped it in cold. This white mark is number one. Of course, this is an electronic distributor. 
You know, there ain't nothing in there other than a pickup wheel. It's amazing what Chrysler did here. And everything else is computer control. It's amazing in in a in a neat sense that how 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 overly simplistic it is to, you know, this was the transition to distributor list, but basically I guess got to clean up the parts and whatever you know get the new get the wearables, but. Um, this is the reference for number one cylinder, and now I'm going to pick up the box or pick up the data to identify. I mean, certainly I can just clock, rotate the distributor and put it there. Um, I don't know that one tooth is going to index it back straight back. I don't know that it doesn't necessarily need to go straight back. I suppose I'll clock that. And then I got to find out where my... My pickup wheel needs to be in degrees off of top dead so that I can tack weld, only tack weld it on at this point. So then I'll have my distributor reference done, my my crank position sensor reference uh, done, and uh, we'll go from there. I mean, there's, there's three things. Number one is where is that relative to the crank when it triggers and... Where's my sensor? And will my sensor fit? So, um, lo a lot of things to think about at this point. More coming. I'll show you. <laughs> All right, I got a chain. I don't know why. I, I couldn't find my chain. Just couldn't find it. Um, but I went and picked up the chain. I picked up a new cap, I picked up a new rotor, I know that's got to come out to run the oil pump. Uh, guys, when you're doing a rebuild, get that zinc in there. If you're not doing a roller cam, if you're doing a flat tappet cam, you got to have that in. And then I ran that diesel fuel, I don't know if I showed that to you, but 15, <clears throat> 1540 uh, diesel fuel. Got um, some pretty good clearances, but uh, I'm going to go with high oil pressure and the heavy oil, at least on the initial. Some of the literature that I read included running these on, you know, straight 20. Or these, these were straight 20 uh, oil when, when recommended, but, you know, of course, I'm not going to run a straight weight in it. So... Um, I'll do a little more research on what to put in there, but my clearances indicate good, but we got that great big top end. I mean, shit, I bet you that top end with those rails and those lifters, you know, that's a that's a fair amount of that oil running that. So, the other thing that I did is I tried to modify the original dipstick, and that just wasn't going for me, so I ran out to the salvage yard, and these are the pieces from the original dipstick, and I wanted... The yellow ring so I grabbed a few dipsticks out there I like that because that'll match the transmission yellow ring and then I shortened this dipstick the <clears throat> the irony is that the safe where am I at here come on there we go Right there, see the safe zone below that add, and then the top. I lined up the top of the safe zone, the full indicator with the OEM dipstick, and the length was almost right there. But the most important thing is I lined it up. I think this was like eighth inch, three sixteenths longer, which doesn't matter. It'll just go three sixteenths longer into the pan. I just wanted my fill uh, value to be at the right line. And then I ran it all the way up to drill the new hole, cut the stick to sh shape, which was just before that twist. Drill the new hole, which is a bitch because these are hardened. I used a propane torch, heated it up to anneal it a little bit. Finished the hole, ran the pin back in, and voila, voila, running through that dipstick. So I had the old one to compare and lay these over the top and compare to. Now I'll fill it, of course, with five quarts run the dipstick in, validate it. I mean, if I'm in the in the zip code, you know, an eighth, three sixteenths of an inch away from the line, okay, if it has five quarts and a pint <clears throat> in it, I'm, I'm not overly concerned. I'm more concerned if it has 
four quarts and it's registering full or if it has um, six quarts and it's registering under full you know so so in that in that regard anyway so I'm getting that that lined up um, everything looks like it's gonna gonna line up perfectly I did a few bends with the tubing bender in here to add some contour so that this mounts to the original location and it actually this longer stick the original one was about this long right before that bend but this longer stick gets me underneath you can see where I have valve cover on there it gets me underneath that so that you can actually access it so it's gonna work out pretty slick as far as I can tell I didn't bolt put the body on to check but I mocked it up so anyway, I'm fluiding it up. <clears throat> I got the drain, new drain plug in, uh, the pan. I'm going to tighten the headers down, uh, and then I'm going to begin nestling it into the into the chassis. So here we go. Oh, and of course I bolted up the flex plate and the adapter ring. So we are about ready for for the fun part. Hey folks, got the intake started, coil mounted, the harness started, routed, um, got to pull the disty out and prime the system, got to get a doggone oil pressure gauge in there. Um, so I'm, I'm started on that, everything's in and mounted, tightened up, exhaust, the whole works. So I'm, right now I'm working on the fuel rail, and you'll have to remember a few videos back where I drew these up and laser cut them out and and made these pieces. And right now I'm in the process of assembling the brand new um, ooh yeah assembling the the uh, brand new rails the the new uh, remand injectors to the rails so all with the all with the old and in with the remand there's the bag the other four are in that bottom bag so i decided that i'll get that rail built out clean it up hook her up and then i want to test the rails when i get both of them i'm going to test the full fuel system up to the injectors just lay them on the on the vehicle not installed into the you know, the intake manifold. Make sure that everything pressures up and there's no leaks. I've already tested the system up to the regulator, as you recall. And at this point now, I want to make sure I don't have anything blowing off or anything like that. That design, by the way, um, you know, it's a 20-gauge piece of stainless steel threaded on either side uh, through the... Uh, which was 20 gauge, the 20 gauge re retaining clip right here. Where is it? Not that. Right there. There's what used to hold it on. It would go around a half moon and retain it. I mean, it's only 40, 50, let's just say 50, 50 to 60 PSI. You won't see 60 PSI max, but that holds it. It does a, de a nice decorative um, install, you know, and it sits on there like this. The wiring's up there on the front, so it looks good. It looks good. I mean, for all practical purposes, I'm dazzling, dazzling with, attempting to dazzle with details, but those details, I think, make a little bit of a difference, and there's a lot of D words in there. So that's that's where I'm at right now. It's time to go inside. Time to enjoy the day. What's left of it? Well, today's a day of serious amounts of odds and ends. All this is now tightened up. The hose is that, the manifold's on, the injector rails are on. Everything's buttoned up, connected. Power brake hose, PCV. Goes to the manifold on that nipple right there. Wire tied each one of the injectors down so it looks a little cleaner. Prime the pump, 
put the new cap, clean the distributor, completely cleaned it up. Um, new cap and rotor. Got the oil pressure, got shot up to about 50 PSI. Routed all the fuel rail. Bracket for the fuel rail. So this is all nice and tight now. Fuel rail does not leak. Brought all my wiring around the bell housing. That side is for the engine control unit. This side is for the ignition fuse box, etc. That I have to dig into later. Transmission is routed. Wire tied on and hung. Probably got to get one more on. Yep, I'll have to get one more on here. And, uh... A lot of odds and ends. Probably pretty boring, but stuff that's necessary. You always got to think about, you know, if they could, this could rub against an edge, that kind of stuff. Is it properly routed where it's not going to chafe, cut, whatever? And will it clear? So maybe the spark plug wires are probably around the corner here. And uh, yeah, just getting there. The only connector I have. At this point, that one is for the AC high limit switch. Why that's in the ECU, I don't know. I mean, I do know it's for idling up and stuff. And this is the crank position sensor, which he's going to route down. And I do have a distributor or a wire I'll need to run for the alternator uh, to the starter for the charging system for battery positive. So it's going well later it's been a bit of an interesting day today working on the pulley system and the mount i yanked out the so when i got this pump i rebuilt it a few videos back but i pulled it out of a van pulled it out of a chevy van and the interesting thing is it had a casting on one side and a lot of steel on the other but I sliced it off right there had a big leg that went way out and re-welded it on used the hole to get through to the engine mount and then just you know progressively mocked it up until I had clearance and could use fasteners that were already on the block I got it in as close as I can get it is on to the second pulley here. I pulled the pulley back. Oh, you know, he. I don't think I can get... Well, I possibly can get that ring all the way to the surface here. But it's pressed on to line up with that. If I did pull it to the ring, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go all the way to the back one here. And then I started monkeying around with the alternator a little bit. Right now I just got that bolt in. Kind of kind of eyeballing it right now and he'll hit the first one um, if I get it positioned up here for adjustment where I can make it it'll be adjustable up here a relatively limited range but certainly enough for for a belt and it'll be on the rear most pulley and then if I go with air conditioning which I have a couple of compressor models Certainly have the wiring um, for the EC, PCM, ECU, power control module, whatever. And the, but that guy would have to go up here pretty high. I don't know if I like that. Or down in that hole pretty low. And then, of course, the rad hose, it'd have to be under and tucked inside of it. And then you start to think about the belt orientation and which pulleys it's going to use and combining it with the alternator and and or not and all that kind of stuff so i think at this juncture i'm gonna get the vitals on which is the alternator and the and the power steering pump and uh start with that if i want to go with the ac i will uh, i will worry about that down the road uh or for a different day at least but anyway, that's that's what I kind of 
uh, trying to get my head wrapped around right now is getting these things all dialed in. So at this point, there will be two belts, one for the power steering pump and another one to use the rear uh, uh, groove, the rear pulley on the alternator. If I do go with the uh, with the um, air conditioning, I would have to move the pulley for the power steering pump forward, run it off of that front pulley, get a double pulley for the water pump, and then run a belt driving the alternator. Double belt set up driving the alternator. Driving everything on, including the air conditioning pump. I would just run the power steering on a separate one. Or I could drive this out farther. That's another option. Again, if that thing is up here, I can probably snake behind it. So there, there are options. You know, I was originally thinking serpentine, but... <sighs> don't know. I don't know. So, there we have it. Uh, that's what I was working on today. That fabrication for that power steering pump took some time. That's for sure. But now I can get the hose routings and kind of nice. Just the, the return will loop up and then and it's straight down. And the supply will come underneath and hook over. But, I mean, there's a pile of room. I got to get those fabbed up and ready to go. So, it's looking good. Thanks for watching.